first reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their, pass and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men, indeed, they be punished, yet as they are hopeful of immortality, chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them. And as sacrificial offering, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge the nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love. Because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my hair with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the death by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like this, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord.
I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whosoever believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little, to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. So good morning, my brothers and sisters. So today we celebrate our all souls. Uh, you know, the Church of Christ, as we have come to inherit, it is divided into three. I'm sure maybe you heard this yesterday. The Church Triumphant, the Church Militant, and then the Church Suffering. Okay. So yesterday we celebrated the Church Triumphant. Uh, the saints in heaven, they're already gone. Then the church militant, Miletus, on foot, military. So we are still on the way, on the journey. So we are the church militant. And then the church suffering is what we celebrate today. Well, death is there for all. But when we talk about purgatory, it's a question, people have question mark with it. But I read a book of uh, Alfonso Ligori, The Purgatory. I was going to bring it there, I forgot. Very big book. It's all about visions of people in purgatory. I read all of them. So whether we believe it or not, well, there is something there. By praying for the dead, as far as in the book of Maccabees, is there. There even collation was made, you know, and then an offering was made to pray for the dead. Okay? Yeah, Paul will talk about praying for the dead. It's also there. But there, an offering was made for the dead. It means maybe there's something there. Of course, we, in our own language, we say, uh, the dead person is poor, okay, is poor. Poor in the sense that, you see, you can be rich, but when you die, you are poor, because somebody else must do it for you, okay? So you are poor. 
So based on that, well, what do we do? We pray for the dead. And the church in its wisdom has taken a day out of the 365 one quarter days. Is that enough? Now, if I ask you, your loved ones, you see, at the very beginning, maybe before even burial, yes, you remember them. But after burial, sometimes you forget. You forget them. Once in a while, why it will pop up? Why am I saying all these things? My sister and brother, when you are alive, prepare yourself. Don't die and hope that people behind will be praying for you to go to heaven. Do what you have to do now. You see, every day that you wake up, know that you have dug a shovel out of your grave. Believe it. You are getting closer to the grave. Let us not just make ourselves happy that it wouldn't come. Jesus said, I am going to prepare a place for you. He came to die himself. I'm going to prepare a place for you, and I will come for you. Well, if you love Jesus and you want to go to heaven, you have to die until he comes. We will surely die. But the preparation towards that death is what I am trying to hit up. I'm not saying we should not request mass for our dead brothers and sisters. Yes, it's good. We have to do it. But do something yourself. Look at the gospel reading. Look at the second reading. Jesus is saying, come to me. I will give you rest. You unload your problems onto me and I will carry it. You see, any time that this reading is read, I try to demonstrate, but today is money mass. You see, I don't know if you go to Chudu, sometimes even now, uh, on the road, you will see people with bags, okay? Uh, plenty bags, they are selling bags, small, small bags, and then they put papers in, in it, you know, so that their shape will appear well. And then they hang all these things around themselves. Plenty. When I see them, then I say to myself, this is how we carried our sins and sorrows. You see? That's how we carry them. You see, they carry you with heavy load and all that. I say, oh, this thing should be heavy. Yes. Maybe that's how you are even carrying your own sins and sorrows. And you are moving with them. And Jesus is saying, unload all these things unto me. I will carry it down for you. Learn of me. I am meek and humble in heart. Learn of me. What else do we need? You want to conquer the whole world? You want to change the whole world? You want to do all? Do the little that you can. And the little that you will do, do it well. If you are waiting to do it big, you may never do it. But the little that you go out today to do it, do it well. That is all. That is all. And the good Lord bless us all. Amen. We rise. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. 
that the church may be strong in her faith, in the resurrection of the dead, and diligence and prayer for those who have God before us. We pray to the Lord. That as we remember today all those who have died and still need the charity of our prayers for their purification and release, our intention may be fruitful and on their behalf. We pray to the Lord. For all who mourn the loss of loved ones, especially the loss of children who have died or those who succumb to nat natural disasters and violence, that their family suffering may be eased by hope in the life to come. We pray to the Lord. That the power of his holy sacrifice, by which Jesus released us all from the bonds of everlasting death, may free the souls in purgatory who have the most need of God's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are your bonds, women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in our time. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 